take her away. Okay, well, yeah, that's that's me asking uh, who the hell oh, are you and why okay. are we talking to you? Oh, sure. So, yeah. Hey, so we are the um, Dave and Swally from the Canadian University Shooting Federation. And, uh, yeah, we're starting up a little podcast here to uh, keep our, our members informed of of what's going on as well as try to, try to get some new listeners and really um, break out into the universities and, and try to uh, um, spread our education to as many students as possible. Mm-hmm. And you're based out of where? So I'm out of Calgary, Alberta. Okay. And you're a student currently? No, no. So <laughs> I, uh, I started, um, I got involved with the Canadian University Shooting Federation, essentially, from um, uh, I was shooting on the Carleton University shotgun team back when right. I was in university. And yeah, from there, we uh, didn't really have a league to shoot in, right? So we decided, hey, why don't we band together with the other three universities in Canada that have their own shooting leagues? Okay. And and yeah, um, we decided to start the Canadian University Shooting Federation. Okay, so, so this is your baby then? Yeah, yeah. So me, um, our skeet coach, and then one other guy local to the Ottawa area were the first uh, three board members. But honestly, it's been a, a team effort from day one. Um, couldn't have done it without without all the help and support from, from everybody around me. Fair enough. Now, I'm still pretty new into civilian shooting, so to speak. What's the difference between skeet and trap? So they're both shotgun sports, but they're um, kind of drastically different games, right? So I guess kind of the, the um, parallels would be between um, like snooker and traditional pool, right? Okay. So, so which one's the one where you shout pull and you shoot the clay pigeon? So both of them. Um, Both so tra- trap is you shoot pigeons going away from you, whereas skeet is pigeons that are crossing in front of you. Oh, okay, that may I'd say that's a good way to break it though. All right, yeah. is that your main thing? Is shotgun or? Yeah, so that's that's what I shot competitively. But I mean, I've been shooting. Uh, I was exposed from a young age when, out when I was uh, um, going up to my uncle's farm. Um, so from there, I was exposed to firearms uh, throughout my life. Mm-hmm. And then when I was um, uh, about 16, I, I ended up getting my pal and started going shooting uh, a lot and was really mentored by my, my uh, good friend's dad. Mm-hmm. So yeah, from there, just, just caught the bug and been shooting uh, a great way to like, enjoy the outdoors, crown land and whatnot. And um, yeah, that's been my, I guess, bread and butter is just the recreational side. But yeah, I, when I was in university, I did uh, dabble in the ski a bit more competitively. Mm-hmm. Nice. And you're from Alberta, right? Yeah. Yeah. Alberta, born, Alberta. Right, born and raised okay. in Calgary and then went out to Carleton in Ottawa for seven years for school. And then, yeah, did the old move back into your parents' basement option. Yeah, that is what it is. And yes, sir. Yeah. And uh, so uh, the Canadian University Sports Shooting Federation, uh, what, what, why did you decide to start this? And like, what are some of the goals that you're hoping to achieve here? So, yeah, our number one goal is just firearms education. So showing um, young men and women at university institutions um, how great and awesome the wide world of, of sports shooting is. Mm-hmm. Um, and so along with that, um, obviously the competitive shooting comes hand in hand. So we're really striving to get get young people involved and then Im- improve their skills through through things like our our clinics programs, and then give mm-hmm. them a league to shoot in through our our competitions. Because mm-hmm. on you have a website. On the website, there's a list of all the universities that we're uh, affiliated with. Yeah, exactly. CSF.ca slash teams, and you can see it all nicely laid out on a map and uh, all links to their respective pages. Yeah. Um, and uh, now, which sports are you guys usually? Uh, I, there's the, the, the trap, the skeet. You guys have a small bore? 
Yeah, the small bore yeah. rifle. And then we spoke earlier, you guys do airsoft now as well, right? Or what air is gun. it? Air, air guns. Gun. Air guns. Yeah. Yeah. So air they're... guns are nice because yeah. they're you can shoot them anywhere, right? You don't have yeah. to have a range. You can go shoot them at at a gym. You can go shoot them at like uh, in your basement. Uh, yeah. Your and I mean the skills right? are skills are really transferable, regardless yeah, exactly. of the caliber, right? Yeah. <clears throat> a lot cheaper you don't need your, mm -hmm. your pal oftentimes for the lower powered ones so mm -hmm. a great way to, to uh, break into it per se yeah i mean i'm partial to shooting 22s i mean you literally buy ammo by the bucket um exactly. yeah um all right and now uh, what so what kind of guns do you shoot currently um Currently, yeah, beyond the the shotgun shit, um, I like the old military surplus. Uh, yep. It's always it's great to shoot something with a bit of history. Yeah, same. I know, I know you're a fan of that as well. Yeah. And um, yeah, the plinking life, right? You can't beat the cheap ammo. Um, along along with the mm. um, fun that. Well, I don't know great. some of the military surplus. I don't know if I call it cheap. Although <laughs> I guess yeah, I mean that the, uh, the uh, seven six two fifty four hours or. Uh, uh what's in that the moise and the gun and the sks take those i think yeah well the SVT those can and... be bought by in bulk um from what i've heard anyways moisen is the moisen again was one of the first rifles i was interested in. i ended up i'm not i put it kind of on the back burner the only moisen i'm interested in now is uh the dragoon which is a shorter version oh, yeah. um what what i did in the military back home we were lifeguard dragoons so our history is the Dragoon, which is basically a mounted infantryman, and they would have shorter rifles, I guess. Um, but yeah, no, I'm. Uh, I think hopefully my next gun will be a Swedish Mauser, and uh, yeah, those are a little bit more expensive to run over the 22 caliber. But it is. I mean, if I I was so, saying to the BCIT guys as well that uh, if I, if I never shoot the thing, I'd still want one because I yeah. I, I shot them when I was a kid. Uh, when I was in the, we have like a youth militia back home, and uh, I saw one at a gun shop here about two years ago, and uh, it was a sportsized version, so it was kind of ugly, but yeah. uh, just working the action and just holding it, it just, I don't know, I want, I want one again. <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. So that that must have been a good intro to guns, then, eh? Uh, yeah, in the, being trained by the militia there and whatnot. Yeah, I mean it's it's a little bit informal. I mean the the militia that we have at home and the youth the youth militia which you can join when you're 15. I'm S Swedish. We're talking back home in Sweden. Uh, for the listeners, um, our youth militia is kind of I, I I guess a more militant version of what the Canadian cadets are. Uh, you have to be 15 or older to join, and you can stay in the youth corps or section or whatever you want to call it up to the age when you go do your national service and then once you've done your national service if you want to stay in the militia or join the actual militia then you you apply in and it's uh we in sweden we call it the home guard mm -hmm. and it's just a, a national defense force it's just the old timers kind of with the hand-me-down rifles they don't have the more modern ak-5 what the swedish military uses they have the pr previous generation ak-4 um but um other than that they're they're a part of our our, our kind of civil defense force so to speak um but uh, i mean military and, sh and shooting is it's very much around in sweden as well i mean we've been hunting for a long time uh back home we're we're an old country right yeah, my yeah. my regiment has its roots are i think older than canada wow uh, we we go back i believe the the roots of my of the lifeguard dragoons go back to 1521 uh we've got 500 year anniversary coming up wow yeah that's pretty um, wild yeah but yeah no so that my i mean i remember my dad got me a book on on world guns when i was young and and there was a couple there i really liked i thought pretty cool and uh, and then yeah I, I went shooting with a friend from school when i was 13 14 i think that was 22s we were shooting he he belonged to some gun club so we went a couple of times i didn't stick with it i just went a handful of times yeah. And then, yeah, and then when I joined the youth militia when I was 15, shoots in the old. And that, I mean, that's where my love for, for bolt actions and, and military surplus comes from. Um, and then you shoot the fun guns in the military. And then um, fast forward to a couple of years later, living in Canada, I was a correctional officer for a long time. 
and uh, I worked federally for a little bit as well. And the, the Fed guards, they get guns. So we have we had a um, forget what the shotgun was, but we had a shotgun that we got, got qualified on. And uh, we had, um, I think it was an AR-15. I'm not sure the difference between an AR-15 and a, and a semi-automatic. Uh, what is it? C. What is it? The Canadian military calls it. Yeah, the C7s. The C7s. Yeah, because I know the the cops they have this. I believe it's the C7s, but it's a semi-auto only. I believe what we had was the actual AK-5 or AK, AR-15s. So we had an AR-15 in uh, 556, and then we had an AR-15 in a 9 mil. So it was a shotgun, the two ARs, and then you had to qualify on a handgun as well for the up-close and personal shooting, if it ever comes to that. And uh, and then, yeah, had that for a little bit, didn't shoot for a while again. And then um, moving, that was in Alberta. I moved back to BC here a couple of years ago, and I worked as a mechanic at uh, one of the Harley dealerships. And my bench neighbor, he's a... Um, major in the reserves yeah. so him and i were shooting shit all the time when we we're working on bikes about military and about guns and he's actually one of the ones he was the one that kind of talked me into getting my my pal and uh he was the one that suggested you should get a moisen because they're a good entry level gotcha. but um we'll see if i get one i mean they're pretty cheap i guess they've gone up a little bit in the last couple of years but uh i've, I've really got my eye on finding myself a, a swedish mauser yeah, no, interesting and, uh, piece of history. And I mean, I get it coming from your background, right? That really yeah, you and I mean, it's, it's the fact that I used to shoot them when I was yeah. when I was young as well. It's, it's I don't know, like, I, don't know, I won't. Oh, for sure, big time it nostalgia. Is what, is what so I guess what got you interested um, after getting your pal and whatnot, what got you interested in joining the Canadian University Shooting Federation? Okay, so I'd, I'd be kind of, some people, a lot of people probably know me from, from Facebook. I, I, I make no qualms about the fact that I politically am a little bit left, uh, but I still enjoy firearms, and that shouldn't be a weird thing. Uh, I think firearms are a bipartisan thing in North America, and it really doesn't have to be. Uh, back back home, Sweden, Scandinavia, Europe, people have guns. Nobody cares. It's not a big deal. But here, it's it's become a it's become too political, and we need to get the politics out of guns. Um, and this organization being non political, and it's not a gun rights. It's it's more about the education and the actual sport side of things that really attracted me to it. Um, I mean, an example I give from back home is. At one point, one of our neighbors, he was a captain in the militia, and he had a fucking submachine gun at home. Nobody cares. Like, yeah. it, it is what it is. Nobody cares. It's it's, um, the, it's the user, right? It's the, if you're responsible, and I mean, yeah. you know, if you're not one of the bad guys out there doing bad things with guns, I think it yeah. boils down to everybody, whether you're left or right, wants to stop gun violence and, and oh, violence absolutely. in general, right? Yeah. And yeah. I feel like that's where a lot of the, I mean, maybe firearms enthusiasts get a bit misunderstood that mm -hmm. they're, not, they're not fighting to have the firearms in the hands of criminals. They're fighting to, to take them out of the hands of criminals and yeah. take them out of our hands isn't really, it's the wrong target, right? Yeah. Yeah, no, so I, I kind of, um, I mean, I've been keeping an eye on, on the political side of things. Um, I've been on a couple of the Facebook yeah, firearms groups and uh, I mean, it is what it is. It gets a little heated sometimes. There's a ton of misinformation out there. So I've, I've educated myself quite a lot on firearms. I have very limited experience professionally, like I said, just as a correctional officer and and briefly in the military back home. But I mean, I do my my me coming from firearms. It's it was um, it was never a sport. It was always a weapon. It's a way to to shoot somebody until they stop moving. Or stop doing yeah. whatever they're doing right so that's my how i look at firearms uh so that's why i'm kind of trying to learn on the civilian side of things and the sport side of things and i mean shooting is fun it's awesome so i mean if this can turn into more of a sport like it's nice to shoot competitively as well i'm not sure if i'm good enough to do that in the military is all is more volume than than, uh, than anything but um um yeah, so I, I, I'm kind of more interested in see. I'm kind of just seeing where shooting takes me, to be honest. Um, right now, it's just plinking when I do get out. 
uh, and I may or may not hunt. Uh, I may or may not shoot competitively. We'll see what happens with the gun ban. Um, the three gun thing looks pretty interesting. I got some friends who do that. Um, well, that, but that, that, uh, ulti ultimately, what it was was when this last AR ban started coming down, and and originally I was for the ban, and then just as I as I kind of got into the community a little bit more, I kind of changed my mind a little bit because the AR is a fantastic platform. I don't have one. I've got no interest in having one, but uh, I I can see the appeal of them and um, just how popular they are. And people are very attached to them. It's like the Harley Davidson of the gun community of the gun world. Um, so so when the the ban started coming down coming down, I thought rather than a lot of people complain about them, and when people on gun boards or or Facebook groups that are just about guns. It's just a sounding board, right? Like yeah. everybody's on the same side and it just turns into whining. And I hate whining. And I hate when I whine. So I thought, fuck it. I'll do something about it. I'll get involved. So that's when I started looking at, okay, where can I help? And then that's how I ultimately found you and your organization. Because I want to like, instead of talk is cheap, right? Like I might as well, I want to go do something. I've signed, I've signed the, what are they called? Petitions. Sign the petitions and all that stuff. I mean, that's a do on their part. But I mean, I want to take politics out of guns because this this last one that just expired here, September second, I think there was two hundred fifty thousand signatures out of a possible two point two million firearms owners. And I think the firearms community is very divided along the political lines, and a lot of people are more interested. There's a saying I like that uh, that goes, "You shouldn't cut off your nose to spite your face." There's a lot of people that would rather fail than give credit to the other side. And what I'm yeah. trying to do is get rid of this side and that side. Like, I don't give a shit which way people vote. We'll disagree on that another day. But in the meantime, let's just talk about guns, which is no. the, the common denominator, right? Yeah, exactly. So, it's, yeah. So that's what got me into this, uh, into the more serious side of things. And I, basically, I just want to help want to make a difference rather than just talking about what's wrong if you i mean if you complain without suggesting a difference it's just noise oh exactly and we're we're really happy to have you on board to uh help us out with our this is me giving a thumbs up <laughs> yeah this finger is not quite working yet but uh yeah so we'll see what we'll take this podcast i guess we got uh we talked a little bit ahead of time we got some guests lined up already um we got one university your buddy that you started this with he's a firearms instructor and yep. then we've got a lady in saskatchewan prince albert she owns a, a gun shop i guess exactly and then uh like i said the the boys from bcit here uh i think they'd be interested in coming on as well we can talk a little bit about their organization because so, david they, they're quite young as well they're they're in their second year right now Gotcha. Yeah, it's a wide spectrum of different voices to, to hear from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, should be good. Um, and then, yeah, so we're looking at, I guess, doing this every two weeks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Bi-weekly from the CUSF. Mm -hmm. C CUSF are, are on target with the CUSF. On target with the CUSF, yeah. <laughs> Name of the podcast and so most of them were hoping to have a guest on we we're talking about having some of the execs from the from the organization on as well just to report what we're up to or doing those as separate episodes um and then uh we talked a little bit about some swag giveaway as well or giving away some uh as people come on because i understand cabalos is is our by far biggest sponsor right now yeah, yeah, Cabela's uh, hit us up with a pretty major sponsorship. So, um, props to them for really supporting the firearms education community in Canada. Yeah. Um, so yeah, through through their support, we'll definitely be able to uh, get some uh, good. We'll make a difference. We'll yeah. grow. We'll grow. We'll become big. Then we'll take everything over. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dream. Yeah. But um, yeah. So this is just our, our teaser episode, I guess, that we're, we're working on now. And we're hoping to, what did we say, the 15th, we're going to start recording the first one and then yeah. hopefully fire that out into the ether at the end of the month. Yes, sir. Okay. 
All right. Um, so, yeah. Did you have anything else? No, just, uh, yeah, look for us online on all the usual platforms, uh, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, uh, we'll post on uh, mm -hmm. Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. So it'll uh, be hard to miss. Perfect. And get membership. Yeah, exactly. Support, support yeah. shooting. CUSF.ca slash shop. Um, membership buy. is thirty dollars. Thirty dollar membership. Um, again, we're a nonprofit. All the proceeds go directly to supporting uh, student sports shooting initiatives. Perfect.